Continuing my tales as a party clown of the rich and famous, as a party clown of the rich and famous, it's the early 80s and I was doing my act in the Hamptons to a Tony charity affair. Same routine, telling low jokes, uh, low class jokes to high class folks. The headliner was the world famous Grinchy Fireworks. I guess to help us understand them better, the fireworks were being narrated by none other than <clears throat> thrill-seeking journalist and bon vivant, George Plimpton. As editor of the Paris Review, Plimpton had helped start the careers of writers like Samuel Beckett, Jack Kerouac, and Philip Roth, for those of you who are 50. Um, he was a star maker of sorts. He was also a shameless self-promoter, famous for being famous. So he was sort of a cross between Andy Warhol and Kim Kardashian. Uh, let's see. Um, his voice boomed from the loudspeakers. Fireworks! 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 I love the smell of gunpowder. It smells like fireworks! Hmm. I'd snuck my friend Tim into the gig with me, and as I did my walk around comedy thing, Tim scouted for girls who we might be able to pick up after the party. Now, we were three hours from the city, so uh, the girls would have to have a nice big beach house so we could go back there with them and make our own kind of fireworks. Yeah, hey, listen, it could happen. I mean, Tim looked like a young Harrison Ford, and I looked like his wingman. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of wing, wing fans here, I guess. Uh, okay, come on. Okay, wingman, I lost it. Okay, there is, uh, yeah. Uh, plus, I was wearing my human television costume, which was always a good conversation starter. Tim spotted two young Hampton beauties, so I handed them my remote control and asked them to turn me on. <laughs> Evidently, a foul-mouthed comic pretending to be a television did not fit their proper idea of Hampton's etiquette, so they excused themselves. When the party was over, Plimpton's wife, Freddie, asked if we could come back to their house for what I guessed was an after-party. Turns out to be a very short guest list. There was Plimpton and his wife, Tim and me, and for some unexplained reason, the two young women we tried to pick up at the party. <laughs> like I said, it could happen that we were in a nice big beach house. And there were the two objects of our fireworks making desire. <laughs> and the rockets red glare. Oh yeah. <laughs> Since... Since? It was late. Since it was late, Freddie invited us to stay overnight. And the two young women were close family friends, so they'd be sleeping over too. Oh, bombs bursting in air. Yeah. George liked to write about sports, and he was working on a piece about the breathtaking action pack game, Backgammon. Freddie went straight to bed, George broke out the champagne, and then taught us the rules of the game. The girls pulled out some weed, and we added a second layer of fog to the evening's surreal merriment. George bragged that Paul Simon had been to his house for the pre-fireworks cocktail party. I can't wait to tell everyone at the office that I hung out with Paul Simon. Yeah, well, I can't tell. Uh, can't wait to tell everyone I know that I hung out with George Plumpton. Oh, 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 oh my. I can tell by the way he laughed. It. He loved ass kissing compliments. In all honesty, who doesn't? Let's all go down to the beach. So we all went off into the moonless night. Then George announced, I'm going to take a midnight swim. So right in front of us, he strips, butt naked, and dives in. But because it was so dark, we couldn't see him. The girls called out, Uncle George! Uncle George! They were losing their upper class composure, and they had very high voices. <laughs> you need to dive in after him! Tim and I had surfed together as kids, but you know we never surfed at night because you know, sharks surf at night. You need to go in and save Uncle George! What a conundrum. If we jumped into the dark ocean, a rip current could pull us out to sea. But if we didn't, the girls would think we were cowards, and that would definitely dampen our fireworks. This was one of the few moments in my wild youth that I actually regretted being drunk and stoned. While I was drunk and stoned. Just then, Plimpton came bounding out of the surf, shaking off like a wet puppy. Oh, Uncle George, Uncle George, you gave us a terrible fright. Nonsense. Don't be silly. One has to take chances in life, and taking chances is what I'm known for. After all, I'm George Plimpton. <laughs> he didn't actually say that. But his language, uh, body language did. And it spoke loud and clear since he was naked. So then back to the house for more booze and pot and some of my favorite kind of coke. Free coke. <laughs> Tragically, my memory of the rest of the evening was lost because of my over-imbibing. 
or as they say in rehab, my drunken blackout. <laughs> we woke up in the next morning, around two in the afternoon, to find no one but the housekeeper. In keeping with the glamour of the Hamptons, Tim and I walked several miles back to the highway, stuck out our thumbs, and hitchhiked a ride back to our not-so-rich-and-famous lives. Thank you.